Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to do a MOSFET amplifier. In this case, we are going to perform an analysis of a common source amplifier. We know it's a common source amplifier because if we look here at the output, we can see that it is at the drain terminal and the input is coming in here at the gate and therefore the terminal that is common between the input and the output is the source terminal, hence the name, the common source amplifier. In this case, this particular transistor is biased using a four resistor biasing technique. And we have a few of the parameters for the transistor over here. And we have a signal source with a signal resistance. And we have a load resistance of five kilo ohms. We are asked to find the input resistance, the output resistance, the open circuit voltage gain, and the overall circuit gain of this circuit. As always, the first step in performing the analysis of such a circuit is to do a DC analysis. In this case, let's look at the fact that we can easily find the voltage right here at the gate. In this case, the voltage at the gate is the voltage division between the 300 kilo ohm and the 200 kilo ohm resistors and the 5 volt source. So we can write that the voltage at the gate is 5 volts times 2 divided by 5, which equals 2 volts. The next thing we want to do is we want to look over here at the source and we want to find an equation for the voltage at the source given the current through the source resistance. In this case, we can recognize that since the terminal right below that source resistance is grounded, that the voltage at the source can be expressed as two times ID, where the two is the kilo ohm value of the resistor and ID is given in milliamps. Next thing we know is that since this circuit is in, uh, you know, is an amplifier, that we assume that it's going to be operating in the saturation mode. Well, as a reminder, the saturation mode equation is ID equals one half KN VG minus VS minus the threshold voltage VT and that whole quantity squared. If we move the one half over from the right to the left of the equation, we find that we can have two ID. Well, two ID is equal to VS. So we can say two ID equals VS equals KN times VG minus VS minus VTN quantity squared. Plugging in our known values for KN, VG, and VT, we get that VS equals 11.1 .1 times two minus VS minus 0.7 quantity squared. Now we can see that the problem that we're facing here is that we have a quadratic and we have one variable Vs. Doing some algebra, rearranging, and finding a nice expression, we can find that we will get two values for Vs. The first value for Vs is one volt, and we also find 1.69 volt as a possibility. Now, if we look at these two values, we might recognize that since the threshold voltage is 0.7 volts and our voltage at the gate is two volts, that two volts minus 1.69 volts is less than the threshold voltage of 0.7, and therefore the voltage value of 1.69 volts would put us in cutoff, which means it's not the correct value that we would expect for the voltage at the source. Now that we know the voltage at the source is one volt, we can go back and plug that in to find our value for the drain current. And the drain current is one half of Vs, so the drain current is 0.5 milliamps. One more DC value that we might wanna find is the value of the overvoltage. In this case, we have the overvoltage is two volts minus one volt minus 0.7 volts which equals 0.3 volts. Okay, so now that we have these three values for our DC analysis, the voltage at the source, the drain current, and the overvoltage, we can move on and find our small signal parameters. In this case, uh, it's not actually plural parameters, we just need to find one parameter, and that is our value of GM. We recognize that GM is equal to KNVOV. And knowing that, we can plug in our known value of Kn of 11.1 .1 and our just found value for the overvoltage of 0.3 volts, and we find that Gm is equal to 3.33 milliamps per volt. Okay, so now that we have our small signal parameter, let's now create our small signal equivalent circuit using the hybrid pi model. And you might ask, well, why the hybrid pi model? In this case, we recognize here that this hybrid pi model is appropriate because the source is bypassed with this bypass capacitor. And therefore, in the AC equivalent circuit, the source will be grounded. 
And if it's grounded, I find it easier to use the hybrid pi model from a circuit analysis perspective. So writing out our small signal equivalent circuit using the hybrid pi, we start on the left with our voltage signal and our 12 kilo ohm signal resistance. Moving in, we see that the 12 kilo ohm signal resistance is attached at the gate, and we have the 300 kilo ohm and the 200 kilo ohm biasing resistors. If we follow our rules of shorting our DC voltages down to ground for our small signal equivalent, we find that those two resistors are in parallel. And now we actually get to where we're drawing the equivalent circuit for the transistor. In this case, for a MOSFET, the hybrid pi model is starts with an open circuit. And we know that our source terminal is connected to ground. And now we have our dependent source, which is a downward facing dependent current source, whose value is GMV pi. And that leads us to our drain terminal. And at the drain terminal, we have our 5 kilo ohm drain resistor, which again will be downward facing to ground. And last, we have our load resistance, which is also 5 kilo ohms. And that completes our view of the small signal equivalent circuit model. So let's go ahead and start with trying to find our value of the input resistance. As we look in here to the input of the circuit, hopefully we can see that uh, the resistances that we see are the parallel combination of the R1 and R2 resistors, the 300 kilo ohm and the 200 kilo ohm resistors, and that will become our input resistance. Writing that out, we know that the parallel combination will equal 300 times 200 divided by 500, which gives us 120 kilo ohms. Looking in from our output into the equivalent circuit, we see that the only resistance that we have is the drain resistor. So our drain resistor is equal to our output resistance, which is equal to 5 kilo ohms. Now we can try to solve our gain. Our open circuit gain will be the voltage VI and only including the drain resistor of 5 kilo ohms. So the voltage at the output we can write as minus GM VI times 5 kilo ohms. Moving the VI over from the right to the left, we can write our open circuit voltage gain, which equals minus GMRD and plugging in our values of 3.33 milliamps per volt for GM and 5 kilo ohms for RD, we find that we get minus 16.65 volts per volt. Now, if we include our signal source and our load resistance, we can come up with a, an expression for our overall voltage gain. Let's go ahead and start at the output of the circuit and write a new expression for the output voltage. In this case, we can see that we have two resistors in parallel, the RD resistor and the RL resistor. They're both in parallel. Therefore, the output voltage can be written as minus GM VI times the parallel combination of RD and RL. Now let's try to figure out how the input voltage is a function of the voltage signal. In this case, hopefully we can see that we have a voltage division here between the R-sig and the parallel combination of these biasing resistors that reduces the value of V-sig down to the value of VI. So in this case, we can write that VI equals V-sig times R equivalent divided by R equivalent plus R-sig. Now, substituting this value into our previous equation for V out, we can now write that V out equals minus GM times V sig times RN over RN plus R sig times RD in parallel with RL. And moving the V sig over from the right to the left gives us our overall voltage gain, which is going to be minus GM RN divided by RN plus R sig times RD in parallel with RL. Plugging in our values for GM of 3.33 milliamps per volt and the parallel combination of RD and RL as being 2.5 kilo ohms and the voltage division of RN divided by RN plus R sig as 120 kilo ohms divided by 132 kilo ohms, we find that the overall voltage gain is minus 7.57 volts. So now we find that we have all the four values that we were looking for. We have our overall voltage gain of 7.57 volts per volt. We have our open circuit voltage gain of minus 16.65 volts per volt. We have our output resistance of 5 kilo ohms, and we have our input resistance of 120 kilo ohms. Now you might be looking at this and saying, wow, we lost a whole lot of gain when we added the load and our signal source. So which one was it that caused us the most problems? Well, if we look, we can see that because the drain resistor was exactly the same value as the load resistor at 5 kilo ohms, 
we had a complete split of our current, which dropped our voltage down by half. And therefore, most of the consequence of the gain loss was because of the split here and the load resistance and the RD being very similar values. In order to fix something like that, we might find that it would be best if we put a intermediate amplifier stage in between the output of the common source amplifier and the load that would provide better output resistance characteristics than the 5 kilo ohms that we found here. In the meantime though, we have solved our problem and that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.